I'm Nathan Smith with Tallgrass TV, and I'm here with Charlie Sadoff, with the film The Life and Mind of Mark DeFriest. And if you would just tell us what the movie's about. Sure, the film is about Mark DeFriest, <laughs> who is a um, notorious prisoner in the Florida State prison system. And the reason he's notorious is because he was sent to prison at around age 20 in 1980 and became an escape artist. He was sent there for a very minor crime and didn't feel like he belonged in prison for his minor crime. And he's sort of an ingenious kid and was sort of like a MacGyver kind of personality. And so was able to escape. And because he was able to escape, um, he kept escaping. So he, he always had a plan for escape and different wild kinds of plans, which we show in the, in the movie. And, but he never really had a plan to stay out once he escaped. So he would get caught and sent back in, and he sort of got caught in this vicious cycle where he was con continuously escaping or trying to escape and therefore uh, getting his prison sentence, ex ex prison sentence extended and extended and extended and to the point where he's now been in prison 30 years. And so the film is about, one, his escape attempts, but two, what happened to him once he got in prison and the effort to get him out since in the mo in the last few years. And that's essentially what the movie's about. Right. And what was your role in the film? I was a producer of the film. And when did you join the project? I started working on the film in 2009, so that's five years ago, which has seemed like a long time to be working on a movie, except that the director of the film, Gabriel London, has been working on it 13 years. Mm -hmm. So I, um, my contribution pales in comparison to his. <laughs> So what is it that finally pushed it out the door then? Where, at what point did you guys find the end of your story? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't know that we found the end of the story. Mark's story is still ongoing. And in fact, the making of the film and the, the making of the film and now the release of the film has sort of altered the course of the story. So it, I think you'll, when you see the movie, you see sort of different things happening. And some of those things that are happening as a result of the process of making the film. Um, certain characters that Gabe um, uncovers are brought back into Mark's life as a result of him exploring Mark's story and documenting it. And now, since the film has been released, uh, there's been sort of, a ch we hope, a change in the course of Mark's parole hearings. And we're hoping that the, most, that the upcoming parole hearing in November, November 19th, is we hope has a different result as a, as a result, in part because of the movie being released and there being more public attention about his case and then also different um, legal scholars taking up the cause to a certain effect and different people in different parts of the country sort of advocating on his behalf. So we're hopeful that maybe Mark will actually, some good will come of the film. So what was the most challenging moment you had during the production of the film? I think for me, because I wasn't out in the field, Gabe, the director, was out in the field, so he had a lot of challenging issues along the course, you know, getting access to Mark in top, you know, in high security prisons and things like that. I think for me, the, um, the cup, a couple of the most challenging things were, one, there's, there's animation in the movie, and uh, trying to figure out what style of animation we wanted to use and, and actually executing that and keeping that on budget and on time were the big challenges from my point of view and then also just the whole edit process because I, I supervise the edit and you know it's, it's a interesting and sort of complicated story with lots of moving pieces and it's it was definitely a challenge trying to figure out the best way to put that together and got a lot of feedback from a lot of different people and different screenings and I think you know I've when I come to festivals, I always watch the movie. I, I still watch it. I, I don't know how many times I've seen it, but I don't sort of walk away and then come in at the end for the q and I always sit to watch. I like to see how the movie plays for me and then how it's playing for audiences. And I actually think, I think we actually did a really good job putting this, this film together with <laughs> sort of a lot of disparate elements, um, different archive, different form, different, you know, um, animation, um, Verite scenes, there's a lot of different parts of this and assets that went into making this movie. I think we did a, a, a solid job of putting it together. And so 
I still get satisfaction of watching it even now after I've seen it so many times of the, the job we did of putting all these different pieces together. Did you guys set out to make something that was so multifaceted in presentation, or was it just? It's just that's the work that those are the pieces that we had to work with. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there was there's archive, which is a big part of the story. A lot of documentation, a lot of you know, uh, there's archive footage, and then there's footage that Gabe has accumulated over the years that he shot, and then this whole animated piece, mm -hmm. which is the newest element, and then sort of a whole graphics look, a style that we use to sort of try and tie it all together. Okay. But I, you know, it wasn't that we, I think we, we realized we needed and wanted animation because we thought that that would help bring to life the escapes, and not just the escapes, but sort of Mark's existence. Um, both in this tiny little cell that he's been confined to all these years, but then also sort of the expanse of his imagination and, and uh, animation was a really good tool for doing those kinds of things. Okay. What was the what was the most important lesson you learned during production? The most important lesson. Uh, I mean, I think the thing I don't know if this is the answer you're looking the kind of answer you're looking for, but I think the thing that I'm constantly trying to remind myself of is that Mark is an actual person and so we when you're sitting in an edit room thousands of miles away from him and you're treating him sort of like he's a character in a movie um, I think the important thing for me anyway is to constantly remind myself that he's not just a character in a movie but he's a real person who's sitting in prison and so I think uh, what we're trying to do now is use the film to help change the course of his life. And so I think that's something that we sort of constantly have to remind ourselves of, is that it's not just about getting a movie into festivals and getting people to see a movie, which we love doing and we love getting people to react to it, but in the end we're hopeful that it can change his life. Sure. What are some filmmakers that have influenced you? Um, I think, you know, like most documentary film actors, I think Errol Morris has been a big influence. Uh, I'm sure you get that answer a lot. Um, you're, you're the first. <laughs> um, it's not so much, and it's not any particular filmmakers, but I think different films you always draw from. Um, you know, I think uh, for this film, different animated movies over the course of the, of the, the years that have been done. Um, Brett Morgan films, for example, or... Um, um, different films that have incorporated animation that you know we drew upon for this because that was a big part of it trying to figure it out and um, Eugene Jarecki I think I you know I'm a big fan of his movies uh, so uh, yeah I think those are those are some of the people who've influenced us and the kind of movies that have influenced us so what's next for the film uh, well for, for the film and for you as a filmmaker well for the film the next step is Mark's parole hearing, which is upcoming on November 19th, and at actually Tallgrass is the first festival where we were trying something where we're, we submitted our, we, we distributed our own ballot at the end of the film, um, asking a question about what you think should be done with Mark. And so we're trying to gather people's reactions and opinions about that so that we can uh, give that to the parole commission come November when they make their decision in hopes of giving them some cover from the public to say, hey, you know, if you're, if you believe that Mark should be released or have his parole sentence reduced, then you're not going to necessarily face the objection of the public at large by doing that. So we're hoping that we can gather enough signatures and letters and these ballots which we're going to be taking to other film festivals along the way between now and November. We're doing a little sort of barnstorming through, through Florida. Um, we hope that that makes a difference. Okay. And as for me, we, um, Gabe and I run a uh, production company where we do a lot of short film, um, uh, pro-social films for different clients, and um, that's sort of taking up our energy right now. We're sort of one documentary film at a time, <laughs> and then we'll start on the next one soon enough. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.